Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, I'll describe what project milestones are and a general guideline on how you could set milestones for a typical Six Sigma DMAIC project. Now, there are no prerequisites for this lesson, so let's begin by defining what project milestones are. The project milestones refer to the dates that are used when defining the endpoint for each of the phases within a project, for example, in a DMAIC project, and when you expect each of those phases to be complete. Now the purpose of defining these different mo project milestones is to give the sponsor of the project an expectation of when the project is going to be complete and the progress along the way. It's also a way to help the team understand and plan for their expected level of commitment over time so they know they're going to have to be committed to this particular project at least up until these points of time in the future. As well, it's a way to help maintain a sense of urgency for all the team members who are part of the project. Now, what are the milestones that you should set for each of the phases of the project? Well, since every project is different, there really isn't a perfect way to define all those milestones across every project. But a general guideline that I would recommend is that you might estimate one month for each phase within a DMAIC project and possibly two months for the improve phase, that is for helping you to identify at least the and brainstorm the improvement you're going to put in place and allow time for actually piloting and implementing that improvement. So as a way you might illustrate this, it might look like if you're starting the project right now, the define phase may be complete one month from now, measure phase two months from now, analyze phase three months from now, improve phase possibly five months from now, and then control phase is six months from this beginning point in time. So this again it could be a guideline for that. Again, the improve phase would give that extra time in case you need to pilot or implement those improvements, which generally can take extra time for some of the change management needs to occur when you put those kinds of things in place. Now be sure to adjust the milestones for any holidays or vacation time that may occur during this time period that you're planning. So especially if you have major holidays that are coming up when you're thinking you might have a particular phase that's going to be set to end, then make sure you account for that where you extend the time where instead of being one month out, you might need to add a week or two more again to adjust for the availability of the team and to account for any of those major holidays that could affect the availability of all the folks that are on the team. Now if the project is expected to take longer than six months, if this doesn't seem reasonable for planning it out for six months, then you may need to scope the project down. Or in the same way, if the sponsor of the team is thinking you have to go much faster than what you're planning out in these milestones, then again, you probably need to scope the project down. Or maybe you've got too much baked into it and you need to reduce the expectations or at least what area you're going to cover within the project so you can achieve the complete the project in the uh, expected time frame that the sponsor and the team are looking for. Now be sure the team agrees with the milestones that you're setting from the very beginning as well as the team should agree with any changes that you make to those milestones along the way. So those milestones should be closely managed to make sure that the team doesn't let the, the project just go on and, and you don't have these extended delays. So if you finish a phase early, that's great. Don't adjust the milestones. It doesn't mean everything should be automatically adjusted closer in time simply because you happen to finish a phase early. You may need that extra time a little bit later on in a different phase. Also, at the same rate, don't push out the milestones too often. Yes, you may be late for a particular milestone that was set, and that's never a good thing, especially if you're trying to present it to a sponsor or some leadership. But at the same time, that could be the kind of motivation you need for your team if they're causing some of the delays. So it's okay sometimes for it to look late. That could be what you need to communicate to your, your leadership to get your team's support. And as well, though, uh, you might be able to make up for any delay time later on in the project as a phase might complete earlier than expected. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. Well, a few questions I would ask about milestones and how they're applied to you and your organization is, first of all, how are the milestones usually treated for your particular organization? That is, are they strictly enforced for every single project that's done, or are they not really expected by folks or just very loosely followed? For example, how does the leadership in your organization handle situations when milestones are not met? Also, how do they define their own milestones? That is, do they usually use hard, specific dates, or are they only just soft, generalized type of dates? For example, when they set a milestone, is it something for a future date where there's an exact day that's specified, or they speak of it in terms of this month in this future time, or by this quarter we'll get this thing complete, or by spring or by summer of this particular year is when we're going to complete this. Those are more soft kind of dates that are used, or again, do they use a specific 
specific date. Understanding that can help you to understand the type of milestones you might need to set for your particular project so you're meeting their expectations. So how do you generally handle your own milestones that you might set? So do you set them voluntarily or do you only set them when you're asked or expected to set them? And if you do set them, then how successful are you at meeting your own milestones? If you find that you're less than 80% successful in actually meeting the milestones, then what is it that you can do differently in order to improve that success? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.